Hey guys, I hope you can hang tight with me today. I I have a few words I'd like to say, and and I also have a prophetic word, a, a word of exhortation, and I want to pray a prayer for every one of us. I just uh, want to start with a great verse of Scripture found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, that says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Guys, the Most High is simply telling us not to be anxious or worry about anything. Instead, He wants us to approach Him with thanksgiving in our hearts and let our prayer petitions be made known to Him. Guys, I get it. There is so much talk about nuclear exchange and Nations stockpiling anti-radiation pills and the innumerable signs of the end going on everywhere all at the same time. And not even to mention the struggles many families are struggling through. It is totally overbearing for many. And there are many believers who live in a state of unbroken anxiety and others fret and fume terribly every day. And for one to be perfectly at peace amid the overwhelming darkness and the heartbreaks of life and the global threats the world is receiving at this present time, I think it's time to trust in God's Word. And if I were to ask myself, what is the use of worrying? It never made anybody strong. It never helped anybody to do God's will. It never made a way of escape for anyone out of perplexity. Guys, worry spoils the lives of so many. You know, the Lord said, take no thought, that is, take no anxious thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith all shall we be clothed? Of course, you can read about that from Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. But he does not mean that we are not to take forethought that our life is to be without plan or method, but that we are not to worry about these things. And these things includes everything that's going on prophetically all around the world right now, guys. I know, I know what you're thinking. People know we live in the realm of anxious care by the lines on our faces or the tones of our voices. Uh, the minor key in our lives and the lack of joy in our spirits, guys. I honestly try to scale the heights of a life that is abandoned to God, but many, many times I fall smooth down on my face. I know what it's like. I've been there, done that many times, guys. For myself, I find that it is always weakness for me to be fretting and worrying, questioning, and mistrusting. Can I gain anything by it? Do we unfit ourselves for action and unhinge our minds for wise decisions? I decided a long while back I was no longer going to worry about when the rapture was going to happen. I've decided that God's got it all planned out. And while I still live in this life, God wants us to occupy and redeem the time. Guys, but so many of us are sinking by our struggles when we might float by faith. Guys, we can sink or float. I'm going to try my best to float by faith, guys. Oh, for the grace to be quiet. I have to remind myself and speak out loud. Oh, for me to be still. And know that God is God. Guys, the Holy One of Israel will defend and deliver His own. We may be sure that every word of His will stand. Though the mountains should depart, He deserves to be confided in. I want to be able to say, Come, my soul, return unto thy rest, and lean thy head upon the bosom of the Lord Jesus. Guys, 
That's my desire. Sometimes I can get into a state of mind that I tell Susie I'm going to have to slip out and jump back into the anointing. Well, that's kind of what I did today, and I felt so impressed to the Lord to, uh, to share a word of exhortation, and I also will share a prophetic word with you all that I received from the Lord, and then I felt the Lord gave me a, a heartfelt word of prayer to pray over each and every one of us. But if I was going to exhort us, including myself, I would have to say something like this. Deep inside your soul is where your deepest hurts lie. God meets you there. On the mountains, you stand in awe, but in the valleys, you mature. Wounded warriors never doubt that God is going to make a way for them. He has your back covered. All your impossible situations are under his authority. He is applying his healing balm to every wound, every scar that you have ever suffered. You have been in the crosshairs of the enemy for some time. You have been waiting for the answer, waiting for the door, just waiting and crying out, when, Lord, when? In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13 and verse 14, it says, Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and do not wipe out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for its services. Guys, I exhort you, and I'm exhorting myself to believe that God remembers. Let's let God's power sink deeply into our valleys and then prepare to be launched to the mountain of God and then into everlasting life. Guys, I tried to slip away and get with the Lord and and I just sensed and I felt I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying to me, feel the freshness of the air. The winds of change are upon you. The ground is leveling out from your descent down the mountain. You are bringing with you what I placed in your hands. You are different in ways you may not see, but those that watch you come down will know that you are changed. For the butterfly is now free. The long struggle in the cocoon is over. You have been made new by my loving care. People will throw the past up at you, but I say keep walking forward. Do not spend time answering the endless questioning. You have your orders and no one can delay you unless you let them. Let my new song fill your hearts and minds. Allow your spirit to soar higher until the world fades and only my presence surrounds you. I have beauty for your ashes. Show me your pain and I will show you the blessings that are before you in replacement. I will remove the years of anguish and replace them with overflows of joy. And I am holding you together and I will not let you fall apart. Never let your feelings betray you. Whispers telling you that you are defeated are merely a lie. My angels are always around you, giving you strength. Open your eyes, for I am at work all around you, day in and day out. Look for the signs, and you will soon realize that many things you thought were nothing are actually something powerfully significant. Everything concerning you remains under my vantage point. I am not only addressing your natural world, but the spiritual as well. Choose not to just look at the natural realm. I am at work first in the spiritual realm. You are being cheered on by all of heaven. Feel the presence that surrounds you from above. Pay attention to my still small voice. I will never leave you alone to fend for yourself. Choose to believe that I'm well able to come through for you. I am not surprised at where you are 
and neither should you be, because I am already working everything out for your good. Shake off the lies that seek to take you under. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I love you so completely. My only desire is to be with you and take care of you. I am not looking at the imperfections in your life to disqualify you. I will never choose to disqualify you. I will meet you where you are always. Many desire to know the future, but knowing too much will rob you of the beauty in your present. This is where I am in your now. This is where I am coming through for you and extending my unending favor. You cannot do anything about what is to come except wait. But in your todays, you have the ability and power to see all things become alive that were dead. Speak to what is unproductive and watch it be made new again. Speak to your circumstances and watch my glory fall upon you. I have not created you as a vessel that just gets thrown around by the trials that will come. No, I have built within you the tools that will shift and change any atmosphere. You are my children. What resides in your spirit is my spirit, and nothing is unobtainable for those that believe. Take your rod and your staff and see in your mind what should be and call down from heaven what is needed. My people have thought for too long that the power available in my word is not available to them. Do not believe the lie. Have I not said that you will do even greater things in my name? I am removing broken mindsets from my children I am removing the spirit of rejection and fear. You are mighty vessels for my name's sake. In truth, nothing will defeat you. Change the thoughts that would speak otherwise. When you are weak, I will fill the gap so that you are strong. You were not intended to walk this life on your own strength. From the beginning, I have been with you side by side. Nothing today is different than in the beginning. No moment has ever altered my mind about you. Is there anything that is too hard for me? I am the one who brings the dry bones of your broken lives back together again. And your future is filled with greater days than your former because I am your Lord and King and I am coming for those who are called by my name, says the Lord, the Most High God. Thank you, mighty God. We praise your name, Lord. We await your coming, O Lord. We praise your name. Guys, I just want to say a prayer. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will release the angels to encamp around each and every one of us. We declare everything you have ordained for us will truly come to pass. Raise us up as a remnant to go into the vineyard and reap the harvest of souls that are ripe and ready for salvation. Consume us with the salt of your word and make us thirsty again and make us hungry for more of you. We declare you will always fill us with holy inspiration, motivation, and a perseverance to continue pressing forward. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear you, Lord, as you continue instructing us and showing us the way we should go. When we are weak and weary, be our strength to endure. We declare no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. We declare the fire of God will consume all hindrances the enemy would try to stop us with. We will believe by faith that every chain and every cord of hindrance will be incinerated. We declare the wind of God's Spirit will blow away every smoke screen that would try to blind our eyes. We declare we will soon hear the quaking of the ground, 
that will be the sound of the advancing army of the Lord because we will be marching in victory and leaving the enemy's camp in ruins. We will yet praise your name for praise is a powerful weapon of God. We will continue to reject the tyranny of what circumstances may be saying to us or even what the situation may involve because we are the redeemed of the Lord. Mighty God, give us the faith like Daniel had in the lion's den where we can believe our God will shut the mouths of those who are trying to devour us. Our God's word is sure. Our God's word is unfailing. We will honor God's word as our weapon of warfare. We declare God has placed his word as a sword in our hands. Our God has filled our hearts with assurance that deliverance is at hand, that deliverance is ours. And we declare all these things done in Jesus' name. Amen. Mighty God, we praise your name. We praise your name in advance. Lord, we thank you that you are with us every step of the way. And with our God in the lead, he will never lead us astray. Guys, the rapture is upon us. I don't know when it's going to be, but it's coming and we're going. Guys, let's keep the faith and keep the fire of God burning. And no matter what, let's remain Jesus strong. My wife and I love you all. and We plan to see you in the clouds at any moment. God bless you and Maranatha. Father, heal each one within the sound of our voice, God. Fill them with hope. Fill them with health. Fill them with supernatural strength, O oh God. And if any one of them needs to become born again, save them to the uttermost. Lord, when we are weak and weary, help us to remember from where our hope truly comes. By your grace, keep us from misplacing our faith in worldly things for support. Strengthen us to endure all hardships with confidence, knowing every promise you made will come true. We ask you would rise within each of us and empower us to live better and never bitter. Amen. Be our shalom peace. Keep us within your secret place, high above all turmoils of life. Be God our healer. We ask when we are sick, you would saturate each of us with the healing balm of Gilead, causing us to be free from all pain and sickness. Be God our deliverer and free us from all bondages yes. and evil of this world. We ask you would always restore, renew, and revive each of us all the days of our lives. Yes. Be our strength when we're feeling we cannot go on. Free us from the weight of all worry and fear. Give us rest from the struggles we daily encounter that are wearing us down. We will remember that you, Lord, are with us. You are here. You are powerful. And you are in control. Thank you, Lord, that we can put our hope in you because you are our hope. Though the world may be falling apart all around us, we will yet praise your name. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress. Our God will always be our wraparound shield 
all the days of our lives. You are our Savior. You are our God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that we can always turn to you and find peace. Be our peace today and always. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. And we will believe by faith that all these things are done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Guys, we can talk a little bit about the gospel that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4 says, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. Guys, those are shouting words. Yes, they are. I'm just going to turn it over to Susie and let her present the ABCs of salvation. Hallelujah. And how many know that salvation is as easy as ABC? Yes, it is. The ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. This is where the godly sorrow leads to genuine repentance for sinning against the righteous God. And there is a change of heart. We change our mind and God changes our hearts and regenerates us from the inside out. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and was buried and that God raised Jesus from the dead. This is trusting with all your heart that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Every single person who has ever lived since Adam will bend their knee and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. If you want to become born again today, then say something like this, Lord, you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I confess now that Jesus is my Lord And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. For it is with my heart I believe and am justified. And it is with my mouth that I confess and am saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in you will never be put to shame. You said that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and cleansing me and forgiving all my sins, past, present, and future, and for giving me eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer, you are now a child of God. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house, and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, Watch. Behold, 
I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed.' 